Hey everybody, welcome back to Canadian DIY. I really appreciate you coming back. So I hope your day is going as good as mine. I just finished my last step here on this concrete slab that I made for a cabinet that I built. So this is actually gonna be a small little piece of countertop, but this method will work for end tables, nightstands, a coffee table, whatever you've got. Now this is the simplest way that I could put together to make a killer concrete slab that anybody can do. There's no expensive fancy tools, Everything is done by hand or simple hand tools, and you can get a great, great finish. I'm gonna go over all the steps. I'm gonna go over all the products that I use, as well as a couple different ways to make the mold, which way I like to do it and why, a couple different types of concrete you could and maybe shouldn't use, and all the finishing steps. It's gonna turn out awesome, so let's get to it. To start out on this guy, we need a mold to pour our concrete into. Now I'm using three quarter inch melamine here. It's nice, it's strong, it's sturdy, it's very, very smooth. It's not going to bow under the weight of the concrete. You're definitely going to want to make sure you have a method of making long straight cuts like I am here. I'm using a circular saw with a track guide. You can use a table saw. If you don't have any tools, get a local wood shop or a home center to cut them for you. Alright guys, I figured I'd take a quick second to explain the two most popular ways to making a concrete mold for your slab. Um, now the first way we're going to talk about is uh, taking your side pieces and your base piece and your side pieces are actually going to be mounted on top of it. Now there's a pro and a con to this. The pro is that however thick you're going to make your slab, you can make your side pieces exactly that. Because your side pieces are sitting on top of here, that will basically give you your exact depth once you pour everything. So if you're going to make a two inch slab, you cut your side pieces two inches, problem solved. The con to it and the reason I don't like it is that because your side pieces are mounted on top of your base piece, you've got to remember to make sure your base piece is exactly uh, the width that you need plus your side panels. So in my case, I'm using three quarter inch melamine and I'm making a 40 by 18 inch slab. So if I put these inside, my slab is actually going to be an inch and a half smaller in every direction. So I've got to make sure my slab is 41 and a half by uh, 19 and a half because that will give you my exact inside measurement. Now, that's a confusing way to do it because math is hard. So I'm gonna show you the way I like to do it. And the way I like to do it is mounting my uh, walls on the sides of my base piece. Now, that allows me to make my base piece exactly 40 by 18 like I need, keeps it simple. And the way I like to do it is take two of my walls, doesn't matter if it's the long side or the short side, and cut them exact. Screw them on, makes it simple. The downside to this method is you've got to account for the thickness of your material in your side. So I'm pouring an inch and a half slab. I've got three quarter inch melamine, so I have to make sure to make my side panels, obviously two and a quarter inches wide. And that will give me an inch and a half depth inside. So this is a little bit easier because now I don't have to remember one measurement as opposed to trying to fudge them all. Now, like I said, my side panels, what also makes this easy, I've already measured uh, two of them. Like I said, doesn't matter if it's the long side or the side or the short side, 18 inches. Keeps it simple. Now, your other side, what you can do is you can come in here and flush it up and then mark it and cut it, but you don't have to. Another reason I like this method is demolding is way easier as opposed to sitting on top of your concrete and you're trying to be gingerly with it and not crack it. With this method, just slide your side pieces over. Now I've got overhang on each side. So that way when I go to demold, I can actually grab this and pry it off. Gives me a nice handle. So demolding is a lot easier. Measuring is a lot easier because math is hard. So this is the way I like to do it. Choose your weapon. Once you have everything cut for your mold, assembly is really, really simple. I'm using inch and a half drywall screws because they tend to be a little bit thinner but very coarse. They can hold on to the chipboard of the melamine and pre-drill your holes about every six to eight inches and add your screws. It's as simple as that. From there, I'm just going to take a damp shop towel and I'm just going to wipe down the mold real quick. Get rid of any dust or anything that might be sitting in there and then just dust it off with a dry microfiber after that. Now, as for our mold release, I like using a car wax. This is a really inexpensive car wax you can buy anywhere. Apply it very liberally. I'm just doing a bunch of little small circles to make sure I've got everywhere on the mold and make sure you do all the sides, the edges, the corners, everything. Get it everywhere allow it to dry and cure for about a good 10 minutes allow it to really harden up 
Then it's just a simple buff off with a microfiber towel. For reinforcement on our mold here for our concrete, I'm just using a wire mesh. Now you can buy this in the concrete aisle at any home store and I'm just using a very inexpensive pair of bolt cutters. Trust me when I say this is the easiest way to cut it. You're definitely going to want just a cheap pair of bolt cutters. It will go a long way. Cut your reinforcement to fit about an inch away from all of the walls on the inside. To seal the mold we're using 100% silicone. Now I like cutting the tube as small as I possibly can so just under an eighth of an inch. Cut it at a 45 degree angle and apply the thinnest bead you can possibly get away with in long straight applications. Try not to stop, try not to go too fast. Just nice long straight beads is all you're going for. Then to smooth it out, I'm just using a dry finger. You can use a wet finger, a dry finger. Uh, you can use cake fondant round over tools if you have those. You can use a caulking uh, smoothing tool if you have one of those. I'm just using my finger here. I just want to show you guys how great of a finish you can get with just your finger. A lot of people are going to tell you it's the wrong way, but trust me when I say it works. After giving our silicone a couple hours to dry, I'm going to shim my mold, get it all nice, level, perfect in both directions and now we got to mix our concrete. Now our concrete here you can buy a countertop specific concrete. I don't have that in my area so I'm just using a basic 6000 psi professional grade concrete you can buy in the concrete aisle and I'm mixing it in a plastic tub you can buy in that exact same concrete aisle. I'll have a link to a concrete calculator down below uh, so you can figure out about how much you're going to need for your mold. I know this is going to take about two bags. I'm mixing one to start and then adding more water and concrete as I go. Now I have also added some uh, charcoal dye because it's just what I'm going for. But you're going to mix your concrete to about an oatmeal or a uh, cake batter type consistency. So go ahead and add it to your mold once it's all mixed up. Push it around into all the corners with your finger and then go around and give it a first round of vibrating. So tap all the sides, the bottom with a hammer. Once it starts to level out and a bunch of bubbles are gone, then you can add your reinforcement. You want to get it about three quarters full, then add your reinforcement. Then go ahead and finish adding your concrete and smooth it out. Now I'm going to screed the top of my concrete here. This will just level it off and give you a nice consistency right out of the gate. So just take this nice straight 2x4 and go back and forth in a sawing motion. If you have any low spots, take the concrete from in front of the screed, add it to the back, and vice versa. Anything else, just throw it back in the bucket. Now this step here, I cannot stress how important it is. Vibrate, 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 vibrate. Me and my brother went around and vibrated this mold with hammers for probably about 20 minutes. Uh, you can also use power tools. My favorite is using a reciprocating saw. If you have it in a sawzall without a blade in it, just use it directly onto the mold. You can see how many bubbles were coming up and popping. I went around for about another 10 minutes after this. Vibrate that mold, you guys. That's gonna get all of our bubbles out. Once it's fully vibrated, go ahead and cover it with a plastic bag. A couple hours later, we're going to come back and I'm just using a trowel. Now this step is completely optional. I'm mostly using it to pop any remaining bubbles that have come to the surface. As you can see, it's a light, light touch. You don't have to be a pro to do this. Don't worry about it. We're just popping some bubbles and smoothing out the bottom. Once you're done your troweling, go ahead and cover it up and give it about 48 hours to cure. After 48 hours, it's time to demold this bad boy. Go ahead, take your plastic off, take all your screws out of the mold, and then we can start using these nice long handles and peel away the sides and get your first look at the slab. You can see on the very top of the slab there, in this case, I guess the bottom, it's still got some wet spots, that's good. That means the concrete's drying slowly and that's what you want. The combination of car wax on our mold and these handles make demolding a breeze, you guys. Look how easily these sides come off. If you do have one that gets a little stuck, you can use a screwdriver and pry it off. Make sure you go wood on wood, though. Never pry against the concrete. But you can see here, we don't have that problem. To go ahead and finish out the bottom side, I'm going to use a medium grit sanding sponge. And I'm just making a couple of passes along the edges, just to take off a sharp edge and kind of round it over a bit. Make sure when you sand, though, you sand from the corner back into the center of the slab. Don't sand all willy-nilly or you risk blowing out an edge. 
to keep the slab drying evenly, I'm going to take a water bottle spritzer, whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to mist the entire slab, the bottom, all the sides, everything like that. Now we have to flip the slab over and get the other piece of the mold off. If your slab is bigger than mine or awkward, make sure to have a second person help you. Put a towel down, stand the slab up on that towel, and then flip it over onto a couple of 2x4s. This way, once the mold is removed, we can get access to the entire 360 degrees of it with air and let it finish curing evenly. You can see straight out of the mold though how good this slab looks, you guys. This is what a bunch of vibrating will do beforehand. So like I said, make sure you vibrate because you will get an amazing result right out of the box. With the slab fully demolded, now we have to wait another 48 hours. I know it sucks, but we gotta let the slab come up to full hardness before we do any finishing steps. To finish it, it's all done by hand, no tools. So I've got some 800 grit sandpaper here and we're gonna wet sand the slab. So wrap your sandpaper around that sanding block you had before and then wet the slab, wet your sandpaper and just go around and sand the entire slab. I'm using very, very light pressure, it doesn't take much. Keep everything good and wet and lubricated and just go back and forth and sand in long straight passes, no circles here. Once you're done one direction, turn it 90 degrees and go the opposite direction to itself. It doesn't take any pressure. Once you feel the sandpaper sort of break free, you know you're done. Then just come back and soak the slab again with some water and a dry shop rag and just wipe all the sanding dust off. Now we've got to flip the slab over, so bottom up, stand it up again on a couple of shop towels or a rag, and then flip the slab. Now we're going to go ahead and just seal the bottom. This part doesn't have to be pretty, but it stops any uh, concrete dust from coming up on your fingers. So just soak a microfiber towel and just wipe it on. Give it about an hour to dry and then flip the slab back over. Give it a quick dusting with a dry rag on the top side. And then we're going to apply our sealer. Now I'm soaking the slab first with water and then soak a microfiber towel. Get it good and wet with this concrete sealer. And then in long straight passes, wipe it in. Come back about two hours later and wipe another coat in the opposite direction of the first. Do all of the sides, the corners, and the edges, and then let it dry again a couple hours. Once the sealer is dry, then we can wax it. I'll have a link to the sealer and the wax that I used down in the description below, but both of them are concrete countertop specific food grade safe sealers and waxes. So again, get a nice good generous coating of wax in there, do small circles of the wax, and then get it good and thick let it dry for about a half hour once it's dry come back with a dry microfiber towel and just buff it off once the sealer and the wax is removed you can see how great of a finish this leaves no special tools it's all done by hand a little bit of vibrating when it's still wet concrete nice uh, wet sanding and you can see how great this looks it's got a nice satin finish. I don't know what more you can say. I just want to show you how hydrophobic that wax is. So I'm just pouring water straight onto the slab. And you can see, you can literally blow it around. It's just like a Teflon frying pan or something like that. So cleanup is a breeze to anything that's spilled on it. Well, there you guys go. Like I said, great, great finish. Not a whole lot of work, just a little bit of time and effort, but all in all, it turned out awesome. Now, could we take it a step further? Absolutely. We can go back, make a slurry mix, like I said, and we can fill in a couple little pinholes and then go back, re-sand and polish the whole thing, but that's not what this is about. I wanted to show what type of finish you can get with just a little bit of effort, and I think it turned out awesome. So. Like I said, I hope you guys like the video. If you do, thumbs up and a like would be much appreciated. Subscribe down below. I'm going to have a lot more stuff coming out here soon. Everything I used in this video is linked down below as well. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one.